So following the success of the NES Classic and the Super NES Classic, Sony have decided to do something similar with their PlayStation Classic. Unfortunately, it seems like this has very much been like rushed, and the result is incredibly disappointing that if anyone got this for Christmas, I'm really sorry. Like, I think I'll start with the positives. Let's be positive from the beginning. It's smallish. It's cute. In a way, um, HDMI output. There's a negative to it though, uh, and it's powered by USB, so there's no need to plug it in because it's got such a low power draw. A USB will do. That's pretty much it, to be honest. Well, the cable on the controllers are, is an okay length, um, but that's really where it all ends. So, first off, like I mentioned, the HDMI output is there, which is cool. But it's 720p at its highest, which I guess makes sense given how low graphically, how bad things kind of look as it is at 720. Everything is 4x3, which was expected at the time. But regardless of the hardware of the system, the software kind of what makes it really. And it is quite shocking. I have a little list over here. I'm going to read. It has Battle Arena Toshinden. Final Fantasy 7, Intelligent Cube, Jumping Flash, Metal Gear Solid, Mr. Driller, or 4, Ridge Racer Type 4, Resident Evil, Director's Cut, Revelations Persona, Super Puzzle, Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo, Tekken 3, Wild Arms, and then the PAL and North American exclusives, which are Kill Borders 2, Destruction Derby, Grand Theft Auto, Oddworld, Abe's Odyssey, Rayman, Siphon Filter, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six, and Twisted Metal. Sounds like an okay list, but then you realise it doesn't have Crash Bandicoot, or Spyro, or Tomb Raider, or so many games that sort of, in my eyes, make the PlayStation, or at least made the PlayStation for me. Um, makes sense, I guess, in some ways, they don't have the, the football games or anything sort of license-based, so no Tony Hawks or anything like that. You can kind of look past that. But the games here, like, some of them don't really make sense. Like, Revelations Persona, I can guarantee most people never touched. And I think the only reason why it's here is because of the size, or at least the popularity of Persona now. But that's of the Persona games of today, not the one from 1996. So got Resident Evil, cool, there's been better versions, but short, sure, whatever. Um, but playing through all of these games, at least for a little bit, like Destruction Derby's here, that, to me that was one of my favorites, it's the first game I jumped into. And it's fun, but it's quite dated, and the second one is so much, so much of a better game. It was also on PlayStation 1. Um, so here's part of the crux with me is that both the games list and something I didn't even show yet is the controller which I'll show now. It all feels like they thought it would be so big that there's going to be a PlayStation Classic 2 which kind of defeats the purpose of having one of these little retro systems in your living room or bedroom or den or wherever you may have it. It's supposed to be the only one. And if you're going to get a second one on top of it, it's going to have Tomb Raider and Destruction Derby 2 and Wipeout. It doesn't even have Wipeout. That's sort of one of the big ones I had at the beginning. Like, where's Wipeout? Wipeout's a classic. And there's so many more. You can easily make a PlayStation Classic 2, but it defeats the purpose. Re and reason number two why I think there is going to be a PlayStation Classic 2 is this controller. Yep, it's not even the DualShock one. And that's an issue because automatically... It gets rid of everything that needed a dual shock like Ape Escape and so many other games. Now when it came to playing the game and you're stuck with this D-pad, to be fair the controller's okay. Like, build quality it's okay. It's a bit on the light side, especially for now. Uh, I'm used to using PlayStation 4 controller and the Xbox One Elite controller, which is a lot heavier. But regardless, it's still a bit light. But it's build is okay. It's kind of what I remember the original PlayStation controller feeling. Um... But yeah, these games, I didn't realize how bad they controlled. And I think that's one of the big fundamental areas PlayStation won't ever match up to something like the SNES Classic or the NES Classic even. is that this is the, the time of 3D polygonal games. And they, don't, they didn't age well visually and they definitely don't age well control-wise. So many games use tank controls because you only have that one D-pad so you can't look and move simultaneously. It just feels awkward. It is so unfun to play. Like Jumping Flash, if you don't know, is a first person platforming game essentially, which I loved at the time. Um, but it feels so bad. Like going back to original Resident Evil on these controllers, it just none of, even 
Metal Gear Solid is aspects that well Metal Gear Solid never felt great I believe and I think here just sort of solidifies just how bad it used to feel at some point or at least how just how not fun playing PlayStation 1 classic games really are and it's not that I didn't like them I grew up to PlayStation 1 it was my first major system I remember getting right near launch I got it for £300 in Smith store in Tallet in Dublin and I remember that very fondly because it was a new system and I couldn't wait to play it um, and I have all these memories of playing Rayman of Destruction Derby of even Cool Borders and all that and the thing is is I remember that demo disc you got it with it it was like demo disc one or whatever it was called and that was so cool because a lot of these games out here were on it but man they should have just had that demo disc just to just for memory's sake, just for the nostalgia feel, because obviously that's what they're trying to do here, is they're doing it for nostalgia, they're not doing it because they're like, hey, these are the best games we had on this system, is why PlayStation became a household name. Those games aren't there. The Crash Bandicoots, the Tomb Raiders, the Wipeouts, they're not there. Like, Grand Theft Auto 1 is there, and it doesn't feel great. It just doesn't, none of them really do. Um, it's just so disappointing, because it feels rushed. Like, I didn't even mention the emulation side of things. Games don't always hold up their frame rate on this like 25 years after almost well 20 something years after this came out we've gone so far beyond that technology wise that we shouldn't be having frame rate issues at all in any of these games but they they happen um and it's just so disappointing everything about it's so disappointing the ui is okay so it does the job but it could be so much more they could have promotional art in there some behind the scenes stuff anything to make it feel more complete than what it literally looks like is it is it looks like an emulation list and you click it and you start it up the save slots which is kind of cool you press the reset button to go back but you can save the last moment you were in the game so you can go back into it so you don't need to save it it's got this typical emulation feel to it but yet again they're charging 100 euro for this and i believe at time of recording this it's already down to 60 euro um and it'll probably go down more but even at that i i can't recommend it. even if it goes down to 30 euro i can't recommend it the games aren't good enough the controller's not the best this just doesn't run as well as it should and it's just something that should probably be forgotten i just yeah i can't recommend it so yeah, thanks for checking out the video. It's unfortunate that the game or the system didn't turn out the way it was supposed to or you'd want it to. But yeah, thanks for checking out the video. If you liked the video, give it a like. If you didn't, you know, give it a dislike. Don't mind. Obviously, tell me why if you want. That always helps as to why rather than going, yeah, crap. But yeah, if you liked it, uh, maybe even give the channel subscribe. Really appreciate it. I'll leave a link in the description to my streaming channel, which I'll be doing a lot more content over um, in the next couple of weeks and months. But other than that, thanks for checking out the video and uh, hope to see you again very soon.